Okay, number 115 is via Zoom. I think almost everybody's podcasting via Zoom now, right? So I called Kathy and Kirsten just to see how they're doing in the quarantine. I'm going to call, I'm going to do like three-way friend calls like I'm back in eighth grade since I'm on spring break from eighth grade. Um, I think for the next few weeks while we're in this quarantine. I'm going to have a couple more uh, podcasts with my kids to talk about how they're dealing with this quarantine because I think it's helpful for people to just see how we're all similar and maybe get some ideas from each other about what we can do for fun or or for practical reasons. So, I don't know. We'll do it with Zoom with this beautiful thing in the background, this beautiful portion of a portrait. And this, I can just go like this. Hello! <laughs> In the background, maybe next time I should move my head here. <laughs> but then you have this part, which is not great either. I don't know. What are we going to do? Anyway, thanks for showing up. Thanks for coming back every week. I hope you enjoy this episode with us just kind of chatting about quarantine. And um, yeah, it was good to see them. I miss my friends. I've just been seeing my relatives for days on end. I could use a friend. So it was really nice to connect with Kathy and Kirsten. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy number 115. You know what he hates? He's wanting to put my finger in his belly button. So I can go, hey, look at that, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. Sorry, it was late. I was, um, I was finishing my math homework <laughs> so I could finally be on spring break. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Very nice. And you think that's a joke? It's not. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is anybody, I am pretty much teaching eighth grade. Anybody else teaching eighth grade or ninth grade or? I am not. Oh, last I am not. I am a hundred percent hands off and my kids are getting like full school and it's awesome. Yeah, oh, same with me. Really Both lucky. of my kids' schools are like, I mean, Vivian was in school so much the first two weeks. Like she's butt in chair, 8.45 a.m. to 3 p.m. with So she sees all of her teachers, has all of her classes in a day. Okay. Then yeah. she would have a whole bunch of homework. Then they have community meeting, 8 p.m. to 8.30. And I was like, oh my God, she's 12 years old. She went from being like a carefree sixth grader to have in mean, a full-time job and working overtime. She's like... <laughs> Oh my God. And so a lot of parents, I, 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 I mean, they, they were doing really great. They were so, the school was so organized, but I was like, respectfully, perhaps <laughs> it's a bit much. And they had that, a lot of that feedback. So they've dialed it back a lot. Um, so that she's not in school for quite so many hours and it seems like the homework it has decreased, but it's definitely a full, it's a full day and I'm doing very little. Lucky, yeah. you're so lucky. <laughs> I that is not my experience at all. Um, first of all, my kid lost her laptop three weeks ago, and oh. so she's been using my laptop for uh. three so every time she goes online for a class is when I could be working and I have no laptop. Magically, it was found today. Today's the last day of school before spring break. And I knew where that damn laptop was. <laughs> Dang, your laptop is, uh, is under your desk. It has fallen behind the shit under your desk. And that's where it is. So I'm pulling all the shit out. No, mom, I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> has never done it. And today, we had a very serious talk because I got really past my limit this week because... <laughs> Unlike your schools, which sound wonderful, um, Isla school has been uh, terrible. They have been so disorganized. Uh, we haven't heard from the English teacher in a full week. We've had two total math assignments in three weeks. Finally, this week, the math teacher started teaching on Zoom, but he's basically showing them how to do the worksheets and then telling them to do the worksheet he just showed them how to do. So Isla is screenshotting the entire lesson and then just filling out the worksheet. Her PE teacher, smart kid. She's, she yep. is smart. Her, PE, her PE teacher said for PE, she's supposed to be journaling and um, 
what she eats, what she drinks, and her activity. So when I first told her that, she went, oh, I'll just take the zero. (laughs) No, you won't take the zero. She went, yeah, yeah, I'm already into high school. Why do I need it? I don't need to pass PE. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the F. And I went, actually, no, you're not going to take the F. You're going to do the work because you're still supposed to be in school. At least you're not in zero period at six in the morning. Come on. The least you can do is write down what you ate today. I mean, that's the best thing you to do. I'll take this zero. I'm already into high school. I don't need PE. And this has been my every fucking day for three weeks now has been, I don't understand why we need to learn about the constitution. Gee, I don't either. Cause we don't ever talk about it constantly. As adults. It's not relevant these days at all. <laughs> uh, every subject matter has been like this. We have math teacher is on a portal that's different from the portal that the history teacher is on. That's different from the portal that the yearbook staff is on. She has meetings in all these places and it's all scheduled. Some of it goes through Google docs. Some of it goes through Schoology. Some of it goes through an email and I can't keep up with it. She missed a meeting this morning that I forgot. And I'm like, this is just, I can't wait till spring break. (laughs) I'm on spring break. I'm so excited. (laughs) We had this big talk this morning. Bert sat us both down because she and I are very stubborn, very similar. Except I'm a very systematic thinker and she's a very Bert Kreischer thinker. So, uh, but she's my stubborn and my like, yeah, I'm not doing that. That's me. So those two things together are not great. And today I was like, you know, she's not working with me. Like it's all her agenda or her need or she's running the show and I have to be part of the show. Like if I could just, if she had the situation you have where she just go logs on and is in school all day, this wouldn't even be a conversation, but I have to sit with her and manage what she's doing. I can come and go a bit, but I have to be really present in every single class for this particular type of learner that I have in my youngest daughter. So you know, if I say, Hey, let's start at 10, I guarantee you, we don't start till one. And that's the way it's been. So I can't, I can't regulate my own day because she regulates my day with whatever's going on with her and her class schedule and her taking my computer. So Bert's had us both down today and he was like, you guys are, can't do this for the rest of the school year. I'm glad we're at spring break, but I love, it is vital that you find your laptop. And she goes, actually, I think I know where it is. She walks right in her room and picks it up. And I could have absolutely skinned her alive and <laughs> cooked her on a spit in the backyard. I was so fucking mad. I spent three weeks sharing my laptop with this human being and giving her the grace of it, right? Going, well, of course you have class at 1130. I'm working out on with my trainer at 11 and I guess I'll just jerry rig eight pieces of electronics instead of using my own item that I didn't lose. <laughs> So she loses everything. She lost her phone last night. Then the one day I said, Oh, you can do your, um, you can do your assignment on your iPad while I'm using my computer, lost her iPad for about four hours. Couldn't find it. She magically find it when she's online with your daughter, Kathy playing. Yeah. Minecraft. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I know where her iPad is. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> so other than that, this quarantine has been awesome. No joke. How's it been for you guys? Uh, I would say aside from the sense of existential dread and worrying <laughs> about the state of the world. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. I feel like I've been training for this my whole life. Like I'm an <laughs> introvert. I love to be home with my family, with my animals. I love sewing and reading <laughs> and binging TV shows. So I'm like, I feel kind of guilty for loving that stuff, like all that stuff. I'm like, this is sort of living my dream, except for the overwhelming sense of anxiety that comes with how long is this going to last? What's going to happen? Like, you know, we all have like everybody. I mean, by all, everyone in the world has somebody that they know who is immune compromised or elderly or whatever, who, you know, there's like obviously a huge sense of dread. Um, about that and borders being closed like the border between Canada and the states is closed I'm Canadian all my family is in Canada so that's um, a sense of anxiety but honestly on a day-to-day basis 
living my best life. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Kathy? Um, it's okay. Um, I wouldn't say I'm living my best life, but, um, <laughs> okay. That might be a little strong, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, the anxiety, because I live with two people that I am terrified that if they get sick, they will a hundred percent end up in the ER. And, uh, I'm really scared. So every time we step out of the house, it makes me really nervous. Yeah. Beyond that, it's okay. Like the family's fine. Everybody is healthy. Everything's okay. Um, but we foolishly started, um, a remodel project before the world went into chaos. Um, so now we're kind of in it and there's a lot of leaving the house. Um, that we wouldn't do. But now I'm like, literally my house is a disaster. There's yeah. like just shit everywhere, construction materials everywhere. And mm -hmm. if we don't get this finished, then we live like this. So it's like, how many fucking times do I go to Home Depot and how Home Depot has to be the worst place on earth. Like, sorry, mm -hmm. but there are thousands of people just standing in the parking lot, like walking from my car to Home Depot, yeah. like just to get in the line, to get in the store. I'm like, oh my God, this is such a bad idea. Oh. So that's the part that's freaking me out. Beyond yeah. that, it's okay. Like school has been really great. My kids have same kind of thing. They like go to school 8.30 to 3.15. They have some homework. Um, they think it's a lot. I think it's pretty comparable to what they had before. Um, and then they went on spring break on Friday. So this has been the first week where they've had nothing. Um, and it's okay. There's more screen time than I would like. But, you know, we're fine. But it's, I feel like the screen do? time, like this, this whole situation has, is like forcing us to reframe and adjust, um, things that ordinarily like the screen time, for example, which is like, oh my God, my kids spend too much time on, on screens. And now I'm like, oh, thank God for the screens because they can FaceTime and text and interact with all these kids who they don't get to see now. So it, it's really like a lot. And like, I feel like we're sort of natural hoarders. We're not, you guys have been in my house. We're not hoarders, but yeah. I mean, there's always more stuff here than I would like there to be. I would like to Marie Kondo the whole place and have this beautiful minimalist aesthetic experience. But now I'm like, wow, I'm so glad that we didn't get rid of a bunch of this crap because it's like the kids can go in the garage and like sort of pilfer through old boxes of stuff and go, oh, and like Camille started making um, jewelry out of these old toys, oh, uh, making cool. like the earrings and just it's sort of I'm like oh that's interesting so like the new perspective is like we have the stuff that sort of affords for the creativity mm -hmm. um when if I had made that giant gargantuan trip to Goodwill and and purged everything then it'd be like oh what do we do we don't have yeah. any games or puzzles anymore but we're like oh I've got puzzles I've got games I've got you know we've got stuff that's so, awesome we have done a purge we did the great closet clean out and uh, <laughs> between me and the two girls, we had 12 garbage bags and two boxes of clothing and shoes and hats and scarves and all kinds of stuff. And it was uh, awesome. And that's when that's I was awesome. But we clothes, is, clothes is different because that just different. frees up space. Um, but it's not like you're going to play with your clothes, you know? No, no, not a lot of creativity. Some. No. Well, actually, Lily is taking all of her old stuff and like repurposing. She's like cutting and sewing and like tie dyeing, oh, awesome. whatever. I'm like, I'm at it, sister. Like, um, did, this is did the time. Break her arm? Did she break her arm again? That should be the question. Again, this was her April Fool's joke for your oh, daughter. Shut and up! <laughs> she did a great job. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, she did not break anything. The, God. the back line is a hundred percent true. We took the dog skateboarding. I mean, walk the dog while she was skateboarding. She of course fell and landed on her wrist, but it did not break. She is a hundred percent fine, but she decided for April Fool's, she would tell everyone, put it back in the cast and she would tell them she broke her arm. So yeah. That's hysterical. <laughs> I didn't tell you. But it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Have you, did you get Bert's April Fool's? 
Oh, uh, yes. I saw. <laughs> I'm trying to not see it ever again. <laughs> did you see it on Instagram, Kirsten? I did not. Oh, you're <laughs> lucky. You're very really lucky. That you didn't see it. You're really, really lucky. It can't be unseen. It makes the thing look amazing. <laughs> and it's in the vein of this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Uh, that's yeah. pretty bad. So, um, I luckily for Christmas, I don't know why Isla gave me this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> she also gave me this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I got you two. Hear those together? <laughs> uh, I haven't yet because I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll run into somebody I know. And they'll be like, Leanne? <laughs> you can but, turn it inside out. Turn it inside out. Where it oh, I could turn it inside out. But then yeah. what's the fun in that? There's no fun in that. Is this, I mean, how funny is this? That's great. That's <laughs> but really cute. I was just listening to NPR as I was doing my math. <laughs> and I just heard this guy talking about um, New York versus Japan in this uh, epidemic that we are experiencing. Sorry, there was a on my mask. Um, and he was saying, obviously the population of Japan is far more than the population of New York. And Japan is not observing social distancing in the way that we are. They are not quarantining. And they even have their karaoke rooms still open. The only main difference between New York and, sing and uh, Japan is this. Mm. Everybody yes. wears a mask as soon as they walk out the door. So they're thinking, the scientists that are studying COVID, are thinking that we emit so much spit when we're just speaking that falls and lands on surfaces that people end up coming into contact with, that probably just the reduction of that has made an enormous difference. They told me the numbers of people affected in New York versus the number of people affected in Japan and it was staggering, the difference. And I, I can't remember the numbers. I was doing math. There were too many numbers going around my head at one time. But I was like, holy cow. If really this is what it takes for us to get through it, literally, they were like, you go for a walk by yourself in nature, wear the mask. If you go, so which is what Eric Garcetti was saying, our mayor was saying last night, if you leave the house, wear the mask. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous because you have to you know, touch your face. If I'm going for a hike by myself, why? But I guess that's how they're functioning in Japan. And they have so few cases, comparatively speaking. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I've been sewing um, masks and there's like, I hate to tell anybody that I'm doing it because there's so much controversy and people are like, oh, well, the homemade ones, oh, you know, they're terrible and they don't do enough, blah, 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 blah. I have read, I can't tell you how many articles that I have read by doctors, by doctors who have, you know, from South Korea, from uh, lots of places, from Italy, places where this has been really serious. And um, yes, it, they absolutely, that kind of mask that you have, the kind of mask that I'm making is not a substitute for medical grade um, protective equipment, like an N95 mask. Right. But for one, what for when they're using them in the hospitals, it can prolong the life of an N95. So in the past, when that N95 was disposable, they're now required to wear it for multiple shifts. So wearing a fabric mask over top of it prolongs oh. um, that because you can wash the, you know, it sort of serves as a lining. But also just for us wearing like at home, like if we're out and about or going to like Richard wears one at the grocery store. Yes, it's not it's not a um, medical grade, but it still filters 50 to 60% just right. with common cotton, like from sheets, right? Like tightly woven sheets, like a high thread count sheet. So I cut up a bunch of sheets and made a bunch. So it's like, yeah, it's not perfect, but it's better than the alternative. So when Richard is breathing at the grocery store, it's not even as much about protecting him, but protecting everybody else from whatever droplets are coming out yeah. of his mouth. And so if everybody is wearing one, then yeah, it would make a huge difference. Yeah, that's what they were saying. It's pretty crazy. Uh, he said that for people listening, if you're wanting to make a mask, he said it needed to be two, two layers of cotton. And it's yes. even better if you put a paper towel between the two layers of cotton as a filter. Yes. So, um, I, we've been making them with a little, um, like a little open part so that you can slide in 
um, you can like do do different pieces of paper towel, you know, and yes. get rid of the pa throw out the paper towel, or um, like a vacuum filter. If you have like oh. bagged vacuum around, you can cut those up. Um, you can use like dried out um, baby wipes. Oh yeah, are a good substitute. Um, air oh. filters, like any of that stuff, is really helpful if you leave uh, like a little hole or or so a pocket to slip that into. Put in, yeah, because he said. You, this is, he gave me the, gave me the whole rundown on NPR. He was like, you don't have to wear it in your car. Park at the, at the grocery store, put it on before you get out of your car. Keep it on until after you get home, after you take your groceries out, when you can take it off and put it in the laundry, leave it in the laundry. And then, and then have several. So the next time you go out, you, you just keep washing them and reusing them. And I thought, okay, well, that's, I have two. <laughs> that's <laughs> I awesome. I can go out twice <laughs> before I have to wash. But, um, but that, that little ditty about Japan made me feel really hopeful. I was like, if that's the answer to getting us through this peak somehow, that'd be, that's easy. But will Americans do it? Someone just texted me and said, I think America is the world's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, no, you may be right. We may be the world's Florida. <laughs> it's so depressing. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, our leader does have a home in Florida. So <laughs> uh, uh. are you guys wearing masks, Kathy? Anybody in your house? Um, we haven't been, but I think we are going to, um, I had actually listened to a guy on CNN last night. He is a reporter stationed. I think it was in Singapore actually. And he basically said, it's just a cultural thing. Yeah. Like, yes, this, yes, you're he, right. He's like, I feel lost if I leave my house without one. It's almost like us without sunglasses. You're like, what the hell do I do without sunglasses in California? And he's like, when I got here, I thought people were crazy. Wow. And now I can't leave my home without carrying one with me all the time, even prior to this event, you know? So it's really fascinating. I really think that we need to start wearing them. We have some. It just, it does feel weird. Yeah. It feels, it really feels strange weird. to put it, it on. It feels weird. It feels weird too when you go to the store and no one makes eye contact with you. Like I yeah. kept trying to smile. I mean, I'm six feet away, smiling, not waving like, hey, I don't know you, but hey. <laughs> but I try to engage in a smile and people will completely avoid you. Totally avoid you like, you're contaminated. I can't look at you. <laughs> That's really weird. I don't like that part. It I is, mean, yeah. we, our neighborhood is super friendly. No strangers here, really. Not, not a lot of unfriendly people live where we live in this particular part of L.A., and I don't like that, that it's doing that to people. It's making them, yeah. you know, isolate. I know. I, I worry about the long-term implications of like even walking the dog. It's like if you see somebody ahead, like people crossing the street, like the impulse now is to cross the street instead of like to pass by and let the dog sniff and chat, and you know, engage in small talk that that is, you know, of course it can't happen. Like we're being responsible by crossing the street, but, um, I just worry about like the long-term implications about that. Is that going to be the new normal after we've done this for however many months or, you know, however long this lasts, if then the instinct is like avoid all people cross the street, like don't right. engage. How long do you think it's going to last? Longer than we think. I don't know what that even means, but yeah. Like, I think, I think we're not going back to school. Oh, well, you mean this school year? This school year. Yeah, the school year. Oh, it's actually the, the governor, Governor Newsom just announced um, that we are not. Um, that So yesterday or the day before, the state superintendent of California issued a recommendation that no one in California go back to school this school year. And, but that, um, I guess, um, individual school boards had, um, you know, in cities had, uh, the latitude to make their own choices, but the governor issued an order, I believe last night or maybe this morning saying no one in California is going back to school this school year. Wow. I hadn't heard that. Oh, I, got an email. I didn't hear that either. No, I got an email no. from Georgia school saying they were going back May 4th and an email from LAUSD saying we were going back May 1st, which is a Friday, which is stupid. <laughs> so <laughs> random. It is stupid. Who starts school on a Friday? Nobody. <laughs> 
stupidest thing I ever heard. But when I got that, I thought, I don't think we're going back at all. I don't think we're going back at all. I know in the world of live entertainment venue bookings, they're not expecting live venues to be open until after Labor Day. Um, I think that some some uh, bigger companies are pushing for summer because summer amphitheater is a big money maker. But I just don't. the The overall consensus seems to be like Labor Day, which is crazy. What are we going to do with our kids until Labor Day? That is crazy. <laughs> 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 when is your spring break? You're on spring break, right, Kathy? Yep, this week and next week. We have two weeks. Awesome. When is your spring break, Kirsten? Both of my kids are the same as LAUSD, so it oh, starts tomorrow. like tomorrow and next week. Yeah. Next week. What are you going to do for spring break? Any plans? I was feeling really bad for my kids on Friday that they like basically spring break is nothing. We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything. So um, I randomly like very last minute, I came up with the coronavirus carnival and I threw them a mini carnival on Friday. Shut up! Um, I baked, I, like I made like all carnival food for dinner. I did like fried chicken tenders and like um, seasoned French fries and like caramel apples and funnel cake. It's so fun. So fun. Like, You're such a fun mom. I know. That's awesome. And I did like all these like carnival type games. I did like this guessing game with how many gumballs and like all this stuff. And then I gave them little prizes or whatever. So that's awesome. Like, this is all you get. Sorry. But it was really fun actually. And they had a great time and they were super appreciative, which Aww. I did not anticipate. Um, I thought they were going to be like, mom, this is so lame. And they were so cute <laughs> about it. I was like, oh my God. I love that. That's a great idea. That's really fun. It was really fun, actually. But I came up with an excellent um, spring break idea last night. We all sat down as a family because you know uh, tomorrow Isla's spring break starts. Georgia's spring break starts next Thursday, so she goes to school. Actually, next Wednesday. She goes to school Monday, Tuesday, and then she's on break Wednesday. Um, And we were just spitballing ideas and I was like, why don't we buy an outdoor movie screen projector since mine doesn't work and, um, (laughs) and have like a film festival and we can actually invite people because our yard at our other house is big enough that we can sit in like pods of this, your family pod, six feet over here is my family pod, six feet over here is (laughs) your family pod. And we can have like double features in the backyard. And then we're all socially distanced. We have two working bathrooms at our new house. So if we all just Clorox wipe the doorknobs and the toilet and everything we touched after we use it, then we should be social distanced, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to get, I'm, I miss people. I miss you guys. You know, Bert, every time Bert came off the road, he first thing he would say from the airport, he would text all our friends party party, party. And I would go, Oh God, please. No, it's freaking Sunday night or it's Monday night. I don't want to party. I don't want to, I have too much to do. And, um, my takeaway is I guess I didn't really realize how much I enjoyed all those times we got together now that we can't get together. Yeah. Um, I really miss my friends. I keep saying that to my kids. I keep going, I really miss my friends. I need a podcast. I need a party. (laughs) I'm not the one that parties. I was trying. I know it's so interesting. It really puts everything in perspective because I like, I'm a total introvert. I love being at home, but I'm the same way where I'm like, Oh my God. Like, I just want to hug somebody. I want (laughs) to just see you face to face. I mean, Georgia's, um, one of her closest friends at high school had her 16th birthday on March 28th. So bummer. She had a big party planned at Pickwick bowling. It was going to be a big, big party. And so Georgia and I, and another friend and her mom drove over and they have like a semicircular driveway. And Georgia and I stood on one entrance. The other friend and mom stood on the other entrance and the 16 year old came out the front door and we sang happy birthday. And her mom got a, a cupcake and she blew out a candle and that was her birthday. And we stood there for like maybe 20 minutes talking to each other. 
And uh, I was like diarrhea of the mouth. I was like, so anyway, what's going on? How is everybody? Everybody's doing good? Well, tell me what's happening. What are you doing in this quarantine? I couldn't shut up. because, And I thought, finally, when we got in the car, I was like, wow, I guess I spend more time socializing than I realize. Because being shut in, I just didn't realize how much I needed to talk to somebody that was not a member of my family. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. what are your plans, Kirsten, for spring break? Anything? I don't have any. Um, this past week has been really busy with, um, I've had Zoom meetings, like meetups with all these different people. I've, I've been a social butterfly on Zoom, um, which is so, so unlike me. I <laughs> didn't even know Zoom existed um, before a couple of weeks ago. Now both of my kids do school all day on Zoom. Richard has like a standing um, weekly uh, drinks Zoom meeting with his work colleagues. And um, I've done like a, a Zoom, uh, actually, this was a Google chat, doesn't matter. Um, a, a sewing class the other day, I'm doing another one tomorrow. I did a meetup with some sewing friends the other day. We did like a FaceTime drinks with friends the other day. And I said to Richard, I was like, oh my God, like I'm a social butterfly right now, which is great. I'm loving it. But I'm like, we need to like, schedule things for our kids. Like our kids have like enjoyed some downtime. They've been spending a lot of time together. Um, we've been watching like binge watching TV together as a family, but I'm like, Oh, we need to like make some standing family dates during this. If this is going to last a long time, which it looks like it is going to, that we should figure out some of those things. We've done like karaoke. We have a karaoke machine. And so we've done a lot of family karaoke. <laughs> so back to your sewing. Are you yes. sewing all those things on your Instagram? Are those things yes. you have made? That's insane. When do you do that? Well, okay. So sometimes it's a little misleading in terms of when I post about them. So some things I may have sewn like oh, if it yeah, was a no. pattern test. I may yeah. have done it like two months ago. Yeah, whatever, no, but yeah. But still. <laughs> yeah, you but have... there's a lot that you do. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's staggering. Like, when do you do it? Do you just go at night and like, when, like, when do you do it? Um, well, um, I mean, before when there was school, <laughs> I, I used to do it, you know, when I wasn't busy, when I wasn't working, um, when I wasn't, you know, doing stuff around the house, I just, sometimes it's literally like 10 minutes here, like, oh, I'll just do a scene right. and like piece things together like that. And then sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm taking today off of housework and I'm just going to bang something out. Um, so, and now I, I honestly haven't been as productive over this thing. I don't know about you guys, but I've found that um, sort of learning about anxiety. Oh yeah. <laughs> that um, just, this has been such an anxious time and like, I'm doing really well this week, but last week I really felt a great sense of anxiety. And I realized that, um, with anxiety comes a lack of the ability to concentrate. <laughs> mm. Um, and so, you know, I use like, I read voraciously and I have actually done less reading over the, the quarantine period than I have when I've been really busy and had places to go to. Wow. Um, I mean, it's, that's changing a bit now, but I think it was just like the general sense of anxiety, like, Oh, I should check the news again. I should, you know, I should check it. I need to check in with, with my parents again. Like it just sort of a lot of bouncing thoughts. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a work in progress over quarantine, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just find pockets of time and just do it. And sometimes I stay up late. It's really impressive. Oh, I think it's really, impressive. really impressive yeah. because um, I can't even get a book read. I'm still reading that dang book about anxiety in the teenagers. I'm the same way. I find that, well, I guess partly because I am teaching school yeah, two to four hours a day, literally. That'll take a lot out of you. <laughs> it takes a lot out of me. I'm like, I don't want to read. I just read about the Articles of the Confederation and tried to explain that to someone who could give two farts what that means. <laughs> she does not care. She's not interested. Uh, we had this, I'll take the F moment with the PE, is not accurate. She's a liar. Because the, the quiz, they, they, she's supposed to keep this log every day of her activity and her food, right? So when she logs into her portal for school, the quiz 
pops up where you have to just input your log. The anxiety that happened when that quiz popped up, the unwillingness to let it be an F, belied all that big talk that she'd been saying for a week. I'll just take the F. I don't need it. She was a wreck. And she sat down and recreated her whole week of meals and realized she had worked out once in the five days she was supposed to work out, but was honest about it and put it in there as a log because her mother wouldn't let her lie. I was like, you did walk the dog. So put that in there. And then you did run two miles on the treadmill once. So put those are your two activities for the week and you get a zero for the rest of them. But she's full of crap with the, I'll take the zero. <laughs> Cause when it came down to it, she was really upset. She didn't have the work. So frustrating to work with that human being. And do you think she learned from that lesson? Do you think she's put one word down in her <laughs> journal since we did that on Monday? <clears throat> Not one word. So we checked everything today and it said your next journal entry is due April 3rd. No. Yeah. April 3rd, which is tomorrow. So it's this week's, even though tomorrow's spring break, which I don't really get, but it's due tomorrow. And she doesn't, she doesn't get it. She's like, okay. Still hasn't written in the journal. And if she would learn the lesson, I would be much, much <laughs> more apt to let her learn the lesson. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's hard to let someone fail to go, yeah, I'm just going to fail again and then get really anxious and be a complete asshole. And then I'm <laughs> that actually again. And then guess what's happening after that? Same thing. Again, <laughs> not going to learn. I made this spreadsheet for her that was like, Monday, here's what you do. Tuesday, here's what you need to do. Wednesday, uh, for the whole week, right? In theory, all you have to do is look at that sheet and go, oh, yeah, today I have to do this at this time. No, doesn't use the sheet. And then she forgets stuff. And then she goes, oh, you didn't tell me. And I'm like, it's on the fucking sheet. It's on the sheet. What more do I need to do for you besides do it for you, which I think would make her happy. <laughs> it probably would. <laughs> it would make her very happy if I would write her paper on the Articles of the Confederation. She does not know. She's like, I don't even know what an article or a confederation is. I don't understand. It does is not relevant to my life. Uh, what's the point? Anyway, I, I, I'm not looking forward to being a school teacher for the rest of this school year. <laughs> I would have a real problem with that. I'm so grateful that I'm not in your position. Yeah. I could not do homeschooling. Same. It's awful. I mean, I did it with Max for that very brief period when he was in the wrong school and we were looking for a new place. Fuck, it was awful. Yeah. It's awful. So, yeah. I feel hopeful, Leanne, that um, with a little bit more time that um, her school or teachers will figure it out. A bit I'm hopeful more, right? that they seem to have figured it out this week. Like this right. week, the math teacher, the science teacher, and the history teacher were all kind of up and running. The yearbook teacher was really confusing because she works on a totally different portal. So mm -hmm. Isla would keep forgetting to check that portal because we're checking all these other Understandable. things. Understandable. That's annoying. Yeah. Just use the same portal. I don't get it. But, and then the, the English teacher has been totally MIA. We have no idea where this person is. I mean, he's not responding to emails. I'm hoping he's not sick. Um, but he's really great at responding to things. But... Oh. He's, he's like, I, I emailed him. He sent home week one and week two assignments. This was week three this week. And I emailed him Friday and said, is there any assignments for next week? And I haven't heard from him since Friday. So I'm hoping he's not ill. He's young guy. He's younger than me. So I don't know. Scary. Your parents are all okay. Everybody's parents are okay. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. about you? Yeah, my dad's good. He's staying home. Um, he doesn't see anybody anyway. So, and I think Sue until this week, his, his wife until this week was still working in the lunchroom. She's a lunchroom lady. So she was making lunches, breakfast and lunch for the um, free and reduced lunch kids. So she was still having to go to work, but, um, but I think that stopped. I think they're on spring break. So yeah. When mom's kind of the same. I think she's, you know, she didn't see anyone in general anyway. Yeah. So it's been a little bit easier for her. 
Yeah. My mother-in-law's had more trouble with it, but she's getting there. <laughs> did she get her hair done? She did not get her hair done. She's very upset that we did not okay that outing. <laughs> Was the beauty shop even open? Well, it, yeah, it is in her house. If I just went there, I would be seeing no one but her. Oh I was my like, God. Oh my not God. to get your hair done. You cannot leave the house. No, period. Lenore, no. So she did call yesterday and say, um, so we're supposed to be wearing masks. Do you guys have any? Because I'm going to walk to the supermarket. And we were like, why are you going to the supermarket? We're taking you tomorrow. Well, but I just need a couple things today. <laughs> No, you're going to make one trip for two weeks and that's it. Like you're not going. She has, she doesn't have a lot to do. So she goes to several stores like each day of the week. So she's getting out of the house. And I think that is a huge struggle for her The idea of just going to the supermarket and purchasing everything for two weeks is hard. So yeah, she's it's hard for people to just mess with their schedules. It's like, People, oh, really? everyone's, yeah. you know, creature of habit. And yes. when you're, when your habits are messed with, you're like, ah, who am I? Right. Especially <laughs> in her age, you know, she's, yeah. she's older. She's almost 80. Yeah. She just turned 79. Yeah. So yeah, that would be harder. I could see that. Yeah. Um, and you know, she doesn't have anyone but us really. I mean, you know, now that she can't go to Mahjong, she can't see any of her friends. Like she literally has you know, and if she's not going to the supermarket or out to get coffee or whatever, like she's literally not leaving home, right? which of course is what the entire world should be doing, but it's still hard. It's really hard. It's yeah. really hard. Um, any of you guys watched any good movies? We have not watched a single movie yet. Wow. Neither have we. No. Like, yeah. Okay. We watched a movie the girls loved that you guys, I don't know if you've ever watched this with your kids. It's an older movie from 1980. It's called Places in the Heart. Do you remember this movie? Never heard yeah. of it. Is that Sally Field, maybe? Sally Field. Um, and I, I told them when this quarantine started, I've made a new movie list. And some of the movies were going to be about learning something, right? Like Forrest Gump. You watch Forrest Gump, you're super entertained, and you learn a lot, right? It's, it's like movies like that. So the first one we did was Places in the Heart. It's a it's set in the Depression era, woman who loses her husband unexpectedly and has to make her way in the world during the depression. And there's some really great characters and a really great story. And you never know, you know, those movies from like the eighties, you never know how these hip youngsters are going to see them. And they loved it. They were like, that was one of the best movies ever I've ever seen. It was really great. It's not a super fast moving movie, but, um, it's a very deep feeling movie and it deals with, you know, uh, racism. It deals with uh, being poor, with hard work, with persevering. It's a really great movie. So if you're looking for one that probably no one has seen, or you guys maybe haven't seen in a while, that's a good one. Um, we just watched 1917 last night. Have you guys seen that? No, I want to see that. Oh, it was really good. Yeah. And it was, it was the, girls could watch it. There were a lot of dead bodies, but not a lot of gore. You know, it wasn't a lot of blowing up. It wasn't platoon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, platoon scarred me for life. I watched platoon and was like, Oh my God, I can't ever watch that movie again. I've never watched it again. It upset. Uh, it was so good, but yeah, I agree. It, was it upset me to the core that movie. Um, yeah. Um, so no, what, then what are you binge watching Kirsten? Uh, we're watching Schitt's Creek as a family. Uh, um, okay. My kids are, are loving it. And um, Richard and I are watching The Wire. Oh, We've never okay. seen it. Um, no, yeah. I've never seen that either. Is it good, The Wire? It's great. So it's on most people's top, like, top TV shows of all time. Um, mm -hmm. Like a lot of critics, but also like a lot of people that I know are like, I can't believe, how did you go this long without watching The Wire? And um, it's good from the beginning, but it took us probably six or seven or eight or so episodes to like get into it. We were like, oh, it's, it's good. But I kept saying like, I oh, don't know, everybody says it's the best show ever and it's okay, but you know, it's good. But I'm not like addicted. Like when I was watching Breaking Bad or, or Game of Thrones and was just like, oh my God, I can't wait another week. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
but I think we're now getting to a place where I'm like, oh, it just got real. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's good. That's good. You know, we're, we're, we've been watching movies every night. We watched several Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, what else have we watched? Places in the Heart. Um, tonight, we're going to watch The Truman Show because Georgia has to watch it for English class. And I saw that in the movie theater and never saw it again. So I don't really remember that show. That's a fun, sh- that's a fun movie, actually. Is it? My kids have seen that, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember it. Um, we yeah. haven't had time to watch movies yet because Vivian was like on her 12-hour-a-day work day <laughs> up until a couple of days ago. So we were like, oh, my God, like this kid, she had no time to do anything. I finally wow. was like, you know what? You're. I'm done with homework. No homework for you. Get outside and jump on the trampoline. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's toned down now. So I think we have time for a movie. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, we've been taking our dogs. This is another part of my life that's very different. I'm never home all day long. No one's home all day long. These dogs are like, they've become massively needy. I think they're like, oh, you're home. Oh, perfect. Would you just sit down so I could sit on top of you? Perfect. And you're not moving for like eight hours. Good. Perfect. And the puppy is a lunatic. She is playing so hard. She wants to play all day. So we've been driving her. <laughs> Our new house has a really big backyard. So I've been driving them over there and just running them, like just running <laughs> them until they drop. We've been doing that every day. And I keep going, thank God we have this other property. I <laughs> just throw a ball like this. Go, 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 go. <laughs> We've been taking the softball and throwing the softball around and Izzy chases the ball from glove to glove to glove to glove with no promise of ever catching this ball. <laughs> but she's still, and we just have been running her to death. She is, she's nine months old now. So she's like a teenager puppy, <laughs> uh, stubborn. She stopped listening to me. She started. So she sleeps in until noon. She's like <laughs> climbing out through the window, <laughs> hopping on somebody's motorcycle. I wish she was sleeping until <laughs> then. No, she did not sleep until noon. Um, and then I live with a senior dog, you know, Mona, the senior dog, who's like one in the morning going, excuse me, uh, incontinence, I need to go outside. <laughs> Can you just let me out real quick? And I'll take her out before we go to bed and still 1.30, excuse me, old lady needs to go outside. Oh, Mona. Oh, fuck, I can't get a good night's sleep in this quarantine. <laughs> The dogs. So I randomly had this conversation with our orthodontist the other day, partially because my stupid caramel apple making trick broke my daughter's cap off her front tooth. Oh no. <laughs> anyway, dentist is not available. I call her orthodontist. I'm like, how bad is it if I don't get this fixed? It's not a big deal. But anyway, we have this conversation because clearly he's in his office bored because he's not seeing anybody either. Um, and we were talking about walking the dog. I was like, my dog's so thrilled because she gets walked all the time, which doesn't always happen, you know, like yeah. she runs around in the backyard, whatever. And he's like, I was out the other day and dogs are the happiest animals uh. on the planet. If I didn't know better, I think they planned this whole thing. <laughs> like, they're just loving life. Like they're no, they totally all the time and they're being walked all the time. I'm like, that's hysterical. No, the real winners in this yeah. crisis are the dogs and yeah. Zoom. <laughs> and Zoom, right? Zoom. <laughs> Anyone who has a stake in Zoom, it's like, yeah. <laughs> so are you guys getting bo- tired of cooking or bored of your meals? I am so tired of cooking. I am so tired of dishes. Like my dishwasher runs easily twice a day. Like my kitchen sink is constantly filled. I'm like, for the love of God, how many dishes do we have in this house? It is <laughs> insane to me. It's so that funny. Part. I said the same thing to Georgia today. I yeah. had just cleaned the kitchen and then I went to do my math and then <laughs> I came back and the kitchen was, the sink was totally full. And I said to Georgia, I, I don't know how this happens. Like I just filled and started the dishwasher with an empty sink and it was full. It's because yeah. people are taking a glass, a bowl, a small plate into their room and eating, which they're not supposed to be doing, by the way. Yep. And then they're showing up in mass and I have a sink full of dishes. I'm running my dishwasher twice a day too. I, I'm so, However, I'm not doing as much laundry. I realized I'm not either. <laughs> 
people are maybe perhaps not dressing for school. <laughs> <laughs> you are wearing the same comfy to class every <laughs> single day. <laughs> oh, no. I have to tell you that boy comfy. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, like a major deodorizer, like nobody's business. It's not pretty. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> put it this way. I washed five pairs of eyeless panties and one pair of Georgia's. So somebody <laughs> been changing their underwear. <laughs> I was folding the laundry going, oh, huh, interesting. One pair only. One pair. Are you hiding them somewhere? <laughs> are you just not changing them? I'm thinking it's the latter. I'm thinking you're not changing your underwear. I'm not sure that's the best plan here, but maybe uh, not wearing them. Maybe. Maybe she's not wearing them. Her dad doesn't wear underwear. <laughs> but I doubt it. I doubt it. George has always worn underwear. Isla goes in between wearing, not wearing. <laughs> But I think most likely she's just a stanky teenager. Like, not her <laughs> they are not pretty. Every morning when I go in that room, I'm like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm just going to crack your window a little. You okay with that? Yeah. yeah. I do that in Isla's room too. I'm just going to crack your window. No! <laughs> oh, he's fine with it. He knows. That is bad. He does. Oh my God. He doesn't do anything. He still hasn't showered for three days, but. He's aware. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's aware. But he's aware. I mean, that's what matters. <laughs> Why'd you buy me another deodorant? My other one's not gone. I'm like, but it should be. <laughs> it's a hint. Yes. Use it. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. That's funny. When does Camille, is Camille interested in driving? When does she turn? Um, so she turns 15 in May. And um, Richard has been taking her to parking lots for the past Cup three months maybe to practice driving. She's definitely she's really motivated, um, which is funny to me. I would have, I mean, if I was putting money on it, I would have said she wouldn't have been interested. And I know that a lot of younger people aren't yeah. these days, but she's interested. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Um, I've been driving with Georgia a lot, um, and it's um, it's it's tense. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun I, it's not relaxing it's not enjoyable it yeah. it sucks and it, every <gasps> I do she's like mom you're so overreacting and I'm like I'm not actually you almost <laughs> yesterday we were driving she almost hit a person and I, I had to grab the wheel and swerve her away from this person I was like you're gonna hit his elbow with our rear view mirror you are so close. You have to, it's just so nerve wracking. I actually, I actually am not, I'm not enjoying it lately. She was great in the beginning where she really was like, okay, I really don't know what I'm doing, but we've driven so much now that she's gotten more relaxed. Yeah. A little confidence is dangerous. It's dangerous. Sometimes. She's singing while she's driving. And I'm like, oh shit, this is, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> the radio off. She's like, why? I mean, it's so much better to drive with the radio. I'm just going to turn my navigation on. And then I'll look at that. And I was like, nope, I'll be taking the navigation uh, and I'll tell you where to drive. You can't do that yet. You right. can't do that yet. You need to be doing this driving. That's what you need to be doing. Not looking at your navigation. Oh, I hate it. Uh, I mean, the good thing is there's not as many people on the street. So she's driven on the 101 on the freeway several times and that's wow. good, but she's better on the freeway than she is on streets, like with ca parked cars and, and like stationary items. She's not great. <laughs> she's not great. I'm, uh, every time I'm like, we're definitely hitting that. We're definitely hitting that. The, the whole time I'm in the car and Bert, Bert is the worst. He sits in the back seat and tells her how to drive. And I'm like, you can't even see out the windshield. You can't see to see whether or not she's the coast is clear. You need to just shut up. He drives me nuts. I hate driving with both of them because I constantly say the person in the front seat teaches the driver, period. So then you need to get in the front seat. If you're going to teach her how to drive, you can't be a backseat driver. You got to sit in the front seat and he will never do it. It's too anxiety producing for me. So I'm going to sit behind you and tell you both what you're doing. <laughs> Oh, man. So, last night when we were discussing spring break, um, the girls, I, I just went, I have an idea. 
of something we can do. And the girls went off in George's room and they made a spoof PowerPoint of Jumanji. Uh, oh, I saw that on Bert's really funny. Instagram. Yeah. That was so cute. Wasn't that funny? That was really that. funny. So for people who didn't see it, they just went and recast the characters with the four of us and then gave us strengths and weaknesses like they have in the movie. You know how one guy's weakness is cake and, you know, the um, Kevin Hart's character's weakness is cake and his strength is what? I don't even remember. That he carries a lot of stuff or something. They did, she, they, the two girls did that for all four of us. And it was really funny. It was really, really funny. Yeah. This time is making you be creative, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Creative entertainment. Yeah. And even though it's on a screen, like it's not really on a screen. You know no. what I mean? Like that's awesome. They ha got such a kick out of it. We can't wait. We, we challenged the camper families to do that for each of their own families, but we've not received any, um, <laughs> any challenge pieces back yet. I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with. Um, you've been baking a lot, Kathy? Um, I mean, I guess it's kind of about the same as usual. So most days I'm baking something. I got a little frustrated. Like I had a week of baking and my kids like wouldn't eat any of it. I was like, really? You're not even going to try it? Yeah. How rude. Was it was very it? rude. Yes. So. I stopped for a couple of days, but yeah, we're um, still faking away. Depending so back, on the day. Back to the question. Are you guys tired of cooking? I'm tired Richard of has done ninety percent of it. That's good. You're tired of what, Kathy? Um, I said I'm tired of thinking about it. I'm tired of like planning the cooking. I don't mind the actual cooking so much. I just want someone else to decide what we're having for dinner and then I'll make it. Mm -hmm. But like every time I ask for input, they're like, eh, I don't know, whatever. Same at my house. Like I'm just so over it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Same at my house. And now I feel like it's twice because now at lunchtime, they're like, so what are you making for lunch? I'm like, what do you mean? Make it yourself. I don't know. There, we have 3000 leftovers. Yeah. Open the fridge and just warm something up. Yeah. But that's not really what's happening. Yeah. Like, I have the same experience at my house. We have tons of leftovers and they're making sandwiches or, yeah. you know, or quesadillas or, and I'm like, dude, we, we have, there's a beautiful piece of sea bass in there. Yeah. Uh, eat the sea bass. No, I just want a peanut butter sandwich. Okay. <laughs> and then there, you know, it's more dishes, like you said, yeah. and so much leftovers. Um, I'm tired of thinking about it and deciding it too. I'm tired of deciding what to eat and the same. I'm doing lunch and dinner. Um, my kids are, handle their own breakfast, but I've been baking a little bit. The tricky part actually has been my husband, I have to say. Yeah, how so? Because he is um, a little bit needy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he just wants everything to be together now that he's home. He's like, so what do you want to do for breakfast? I'm about to have lunch. What do you want? What are you going to make? What should we do? And I'm like, oh my God, half the time I don't even eat lunch or breakfast or like one of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. or like generally I'll have like a peanut butter and banana sandwich, like, which of course I can't do at this point. So yeah, no. it's like, well, it would be really great if you could just make this. Okay. Right. Sure. I'll get right on that. <laughs> well, Bert has been pretty great. All things considered this whole quarantine. I'm shocked. He's not asking to break the quarantine and get together with people constantly, mm -hmm. but I think he understands the, the gravity of what's going on and his, his anxiety and OCD just won't allow him to break those rules because this is so serious. But yesterday he woke up with some very um, intense anxiety and stayed that way all day. He couldn't kick it all day about this virus. I think um, I had a dream that I, I know this is not funny, but it is funny, but it's not that I got the virus that I was the only person in my house that got it. And that Bert had to move into Isla's bottom bunk and move. And, and I was quarantined in our bedroom. So I had a bathroom and they were having to cook for me and like leave food at the door. This was yeah. what I, I dreamt. And I told him that dream and he had anxiety the whole day <laughs> after that. I was like, well, I mean, I was just a dream. I was just telling you about a dream, but let's think about that. What would we do if one of us got sick? I mean, yeah. 
we'd have to do that. That's what you're supposed to do. And then I was talking to Sandy about it, telling her about my dream. And you know what she and Tom did, which I thought was really smart. They sat down with their girls and had the conversation. They were like, what if mom and dad got this? And you were all in this house. You can't go anywhere. Where are you going to go? What would you do? How would you deal with that? You'd be on your own for two weeks, basically. Right. So how, what does that look like? Where do you get groceries? How do you cook meals? How do you get dog food if you run out? So they made kind of a list of like, this is, this is what you'd have to do if we're incapacitated in this epidemic. Um, and I thought that was kind of a smart conversation to have. Yeah. I don't know if, if in actuality you'd be able to do that, you know, with two kids. I mean, I probably could. Mine are, I mean, George's almost driving. So surely at that age, she and Isla could run the house by themselves, but it's still an interesting conversation to have. What do you guys think about that? I think that's what I'm going to be doing for spring break. <laughs> <laughs> it's your spring break project. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good conversation to have. Richard and I just talked about that the other day. I think there was an article saying, I think they were recommending if you had a kid 15 or older, that that was an appropriate age to have that conversation. But realistically, I mean, whatever age they are, it could happen. Yeah, totally. And what does that mean, you know, for your day to day? I mean... Isla Kreischer would start, she would just move into Danielle's pizza. <laughs> she would just say, I'm just going to pop a cot right here. I'll eat three times a day at Danielle's. And uh, can you help me with my homework? Oh, perfect. <laughs> you know, I think Georgia would actually be fine. She ends up cooking for herself a lot. But I don't know. I think maybe maybe today or tomorrow we'll have that conversation with them too. What, if, what, what, what would that look like, you know? What it would look like here is Vivian DePatry doing all the cooking. She yeah. has been taking her lunch, um, her lunch, like her half hour at lunch and making herself things. Awesome. Um, yeah. She's very interested in cooking and baking and concoctions and stuff. And she's good. But, um, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's totally awesome. What would it look like at your house, Kathy, if you and Steven were in quarantine? Oh, Lily would be running the show. <laughs> You think so? <laughs> oh, I know so. <laughs> yes. Max is not interested in cooking. He's very interested in being taken care of. So <laughs> if someone could do that for him, he's fine. <laughs> oh, Max. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, Georgia would be in charge over here, too. Yeah. It would definitely be Georgia. It definitely would not be Isla. <laughs> Not Max would be like a director from afar, but not <laughs> actually doing anything. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh so. my God. Um, what else can we talk about, ladies? Anything else we need to cover during this COVID moment? Uh, I feel like we could have 10 conversations about this because they're it's just it's just been so eye-opening in so many ways, but it's like where to start. <laughs> Where to start? You know, it makes me appreciate my dad in a different way and to value him. I've been calling him a lot more, partly because I have more time, but partly because I go, you know, I haven't called him enough. If he were to get sick, I would be so upset and I'd be so helpless. You know, the, the scary part of this virus is if you get in ICU, you are by yourself. You, your family yeah. member does not go in there. Nobody's with you. visiting. Yeah. Well, not just ICU at this point. If you have a baby you were there by yourself without your spouse. Right. If you, um, a friend of mine um, had brain surgery <laughs> earlier this month oh and he had to go back today because he's been having headaches and they think they may need to do a brain drain. It's literally oh a thing, drain um, like fluid off of the brain. And he, his partner is not allowed to go in with him to see the doctor. Like it's just, it's one one customer at a time. So right. it's not just COVID patients who are all on their own. Right. Um, it's, yeah. which is crazy. I mean, that's just a whole new world. So I wonder what happens. Like, I wonder what ha happens if you say you go to the gynecologist and you have a sketchy pap smear and then you, you they want you to come back and get that checked out again. Do you just not do that until this is over? 
I don't know. I don't know how that works. I would imagine not. I think, but- yeah, I think most people like, although it's weird because Stephen goes for um, physical therapy. He went for physical therapy the other day, which I thought was very strange. They canceled it for like a week, but then he went for physical therapy on Monday. Huh. So I was like, what's, what's the dividing line? You yeah. Know? Like, what do you go in for? What do you not go in for? Right. I think you're right, though. I think that there's going to be like a big decrease in things that ordinarily you might get checked out. Like I, I started having ringing in my ears, tinnitus, right around the time that this started. And I thought, oh, maybe I have my headphones in too often. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and maybe it's that I'll just stop using my um, AirPods. And I stopped using my AirPods for a couple of weeks and it was still just this constant ringing in my ears in both ears all the time, like all day, all night. I mean, I guess I don't notice when I'm sleeping, but when I'm falling asleep, that's all I can hear. And I was like, God, you know, ordinarily I would go to the doctor and get this checked out and I'm not going to the doctor now to get this checked out. It's, I can live with some ringing in my ears and I, I Googled it. And it turns out that that can be um, a result of stress. Ah, and you've been, which is so, because like I kept talking it to death with Richard and he's like, that's ridiculous. You don't listen. I don't listen to music on my AirPods. I listen to audiobooks. I'm not listening to them that loud. You know, there's no, I, it's, it's never, I mean, I listen to things at a very, a very low volume and um, yeah. So it turns out that it can be a result of stress. So, which makes sense because it literally started right around the time, like a couple of days before the schools got canceled. And that was, you know, it's a stressful time. Right. Yeah. I haven't been really stressed and I don't know why. I don't know if that makes me dumb or like, like I'm concerned, but I've been really relaxed. I've been like, well, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, in my little pod and maybe, I I don't know. I haven't, it hasn't made me anxious yet. I don't know why. Um, Just roll with it. That's good. Yeah. I didn't start getting anxious until last week, leaving the house. Hmm. Like in general, I'm okay, but I get really, really anxious when we have to leave the house these days. Yeah. That's different. And it wasn't that way like a week ago. Or two weeks ago, but I always feel like this is so um, uh, God talk. But I always feel like we're doing all the right things. If we get this, if we get the virus, then I, then that's what was supposed to happen, I guess. Because I'm not like walking to the grocery store going, oh, so anyway, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm being very careful. And then at a certain point, I go, well, there's nothing more I can do. Maybe not. I've meant to have it, but that. I can't do anything else. So why am I going to worry about it? You know, I think that's what my brain does. And maybe that's not always healthy. Maybe I need to be a little more concerned because I mean, I go to Gelson's, I bring my rubber gloves. I, um, I get the cart that the woman has just sanitized and I'm very aware of my distance to other shoppers. Like I really pay attention to all of that. I bag my own groceries. I, I wipe the counter down where I put all the groceries. Um, And I, I'm very mindful of all the stuff that I'm doing, but none of it has been stressful. It doesn't bother me. And I go, Oh, this is just what we have to do now. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm dead inside. (laughs) No, that's good. That sounds very healthy. I don't know. Sometimes I I come home to Bert refuses to go to, he just tells me what to get. (laughs) I'm the canary in the mine. (laughs) Going out into the infected area to see what's going on. And then, of course, I come back. What was Gelson's like? What are they doing? How many people were there? How many people were in line? Do you see anybody you know? Yeah, <laughs> so funny. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe it is healthy. I, I just wonder sometimes. I know a lot of people feel like you do, Kirsten. They're very anxious about it. Um, I don't feel anxious yet. I don't know why. I don't think there's any need to to probe into why you don't because you have a healthy outlook. I would worry if you were just like, Oh, this isn't a big deal. I've had the flu before. 
it, we're going to be fine. And then weren't anxious. Then I'd go, well, you're just not taking it seriously enough, but you're staying home. You're doing all the right things. So that's good. I've really enjoyed my time at home. I have really cleaned my house. It has really magnified how not well my house cleaner does. <laughs> that is uh, even more crystal clear. But I have like been washing the baseboards. I mean, I've been like cleaning the house, washing the walls. And I've enjoyed not having so much to do. You know, Some, I, I've realized, I think, that I give myself more to do than I need to. You know, do I need to go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and Ralph's and Target all in one day? And do I really need that one more pack of pasta when I really have two packs in the cabinet already? I just want the curly ones instead of the straight ones. Not really. So it's made me kind of think about that. I give myself a lot to do that I don't maybe need, need to do. Yeah, you guys I think that's the me? lesson in this, like to, to sort of when we go back to normal life to leave behind all of the things to not just like jump back into how we used to do things to like step into it, how we want to do things. Yeah. And think- like let those old habits fall away. Um, Cause I, I totally relate to everything that you said. You do. Um, oh, good. Yeah, I really do. And I think that like, you know, it's just, it's so important to like this, the perspective is, is everything. And there's so many opportunities for just to change it, to see a different perspective in this. And, you know, whether it's like looking at life through our dog's eyes, that they're like, this is the greatest thing to ever happen. My family's here 24 seven. And, um, there's that, but it's like, even Richard went to Trader Joe's a week ago and, um, I was very nervous about him going. Um, and, uh, it took a long time. He had to stand in line and, you know, there's like a whole thing deal. So it's like, normally a Trader Joe's run would take like a half hour or whatever. And he was gone for hours and he, he texted me and was like, okay, you know, they're, they have this set out very nicely and, you know, the line is very well divided and whatever. So he texted and checked up with me. And when he was standing in line after he'd gotten everything, he said, it's very well stocked here, except for they don't have toilet paper and stuff like that. But it was otherwise very well stocked. And he didn't go crazy. I mean, he got us well stocked so that we could go a week and a half or two weeks, but not like nothing grotesque. It all fit in one cart. But he took a picture of his cart while he was standing in line and he texted it to me and Camille and I sat there and we like blew it up. Like, and we're like, he got ramen. (laughs) Oh, he got the chai tea that I like. Oh, he got, he got the frozen fried rice. And like, by the way, none of this is stuff that we aren't used to. This is all like our regular Trader Joe's run. So it wasn't like, you know, oh, he got, you know, some really expensive, really fancy thing that we've never had before. It's all like our regular staples. And we were so excited. It brought tears to my eyes. Like (laughs) it it was like, where's Waldo with the grocery cart? We're like, Oh, and look at that. We were so excited. And I thought, wow, like we should be this grateful on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. That That is the conversation we had with our kids. um, Right. When this all started, like shortly after the stay at home, was recommended. We we're like, what do you think is going to be the good thing that comes out of this? Like, what's the positive? What do you, what's a good thing? And they were like, mm, not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it was probably day two that this happened. Um, and they actually had, I'm trying to remember now what their answers were, but they actually came up with some pretty good perspectives. And I'm like, okay, that's the conversation we need to continue to have. Yeah. That you know, first of all, we're so flipping lucky. Mm -hmm. Like we can go two weeks without going to the supermarket. We are fine. You know what I mean? Like the kids are eating everything, mostly normal stuff that we've always had. Like it's not, we're not wanting for anything. We don't have to go out for anything. We're super lucky. Mm -hmm. And that's the perspective that they need to continue to have. Well, I'll tell you one magical thing that's happened in my house. My two girls have not been very good friends for a long time. They're not fighting all the time, but they don't see, they haven't seemed to like each other. Like they don't want to spend time together. They don't want to do anything together. 
they don't even like each other lately. And I know that's pretty normal for sisters and, you know, they share a bathroom and they each get aggravated with each other. And, (laughs) but this stay at home has done some magic, some real magic with those two people in this house where Bert and I have commented on over and over again, this may be in the best thing that happened for their relationship as sisters. They are here. Is it the same at your house? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it made them realize, wait a minute, the people in this house are the people that matter. Um, Not to discount their friends because they're still FaceTiming. I mean, Isla, every time I turn around is FaceTiming with Lily. Yes. And I'm like, especially this- like a nine hour FaceTime. They just like leave it on. They just leave it on while they're doing whatever. (laughs) Nothing. Yes. Isla's doing math or you're doing math for her. Yes. Yes. Isla and I are doing math together. Yeah. And, um, and Lily's watching, apparently. And Lily's so watching. That's not creepy. <laughs> and listening. And I'll go, wait, is someone on the phone? And she goes, yeah, it's Lily. And I'm like, get off the phone with Lily. We're doing, we're doing schoolwork. You, you call her when we're done. Just call her. Why does Lily want to listen to me go, so what 3X plus 4 equals? She doesn't care about that. It's the dumbest thing ever. But the two of them are just, they're just awesome. We played Rumi Cube once or Rummy Cube. <laughs> um, <laughs> as we learned it's called um and that we just had a blast and we're all hanging out in the front yard and they're getting along so great they're walking the dogs together I mean this is like what we've always kind of hoped they would realize that they have a good friend in each other there's total opposites just like me and Bert are good friends and total opposites and they just it was like they didn't even care the other one existed until this happened yeah um so I love that. Is that happening at your house, Kathy? I know Kirsten said it is. It has, yes. Um, not to that extent necessarily, mm-hmm. but yes, they're definitely they're hanging out more. Yeah. Like because they've got no one else to hang out with. Yeah. You know? Um, and it is nice because as much as they fight, they do actually like each other. Right. Um same here. Yeah. They do actually like each other. And even though they act like they don't. Correct. Yes. So. Stupid people. These yeah. people are just stupid. <laughs> Acting like they don't like each other. Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, I'm glad we got to chat for a few minutes. Me I too. Mentioned- we got to do this again. I know. We'll have to do it again. We'll have to do this again and talk about Girl Scouts for next year. <laughs> but not on video. Not on <laughs> video. Um, but um, what are you making for dinner tonight, Kathy? That is an excellent question. I'm <laughs> debating between two things. So I made focaccia bread um, mm-hmm. and I'm either making um, tortellini with, you know, sauce or I'm making this new um, egg noodle um, sort of pasta-y dish with chicken broth and whatnot. I'm mm-hmm. debating between the two. It depends what time I get started. Right. I'll make focaccia bread. I bet it's good. Right. I'll let you know. <laughs> Kirsten, what are you making for dinner? I think we're doing um, like a bunch of Trader Joe's, like Indian, basically, a bunch oh. of Trader Joe's, like Indian dishes. I love mm-hmm. Indian food. Me too. I have no idea what we're making tonight. We still get our blue apron twice a week, which uh, if ever there was a time to be a blue apron customer, yeah. it's now. Um, it comes usually a day later than usual, which I'm sure is for shipping reasons. It just takes a little longer. but we got it a day late this week and everything The I think the meat, I know the meat is frozen. And then when they ship it, it thaws. So by the time you get it, it's almost thawed out, but it was still a little bit fro- fro- frozen last night. So it's clearly still working their shipping method and everything, but that's mm-hmm. been a godsend because that's two meals with fresh vegetables that you just don't have to deal with. And the whole thing's in the box. So Are you guys ordering like, groceries at all or you just go into the store and buying them I'm going to the store and buying them and you know Bert has um the guy at the joint leeway uh, oh. the joint is like a fishmonger on Ventura and leeway during this crisis is able to get some minor groceries and will deliver them so if eggs milk uh, butter um I think some pastas uh fish obviously but he's also has poultry and beef and I think some pork now as well, even though he just did fish before. He's kind of become a, a grocery delivery system. So we've had him deliver some stuff 
But other than that, I'm going to Gelson's. I go to Gelson's probably every four days, something like that, because I, you know, I've been on this weight loss adventure. I've lost 16 pounds. Thank you. I continue to lose another pound in this quarantine, which I was really proud of, but I have to eat dark green vegetables and lean protein. I have plenty of lean protein, but dark green vegetables go bad. You know, I can't buy two weeks of dark green vegetables because they're, they, I, they're bad. So about every four days I start running low and I also eat red apples and strawberries on this regiment. So I run out of those too, because Georgia eats an apple a day. And so do I. So, you know, about four days in, we've eaten all our fresh. So I am still going to Gelson's. I'm afraid they're going to stop that at some point and either make you have to get a delivery. But I know someone here was telling me they went to Instacart on like a Wednesday and they were scheduling the delivery for Friday. So, yeah, well, I know like I can't get a delivery date for Whole Foods or Amazon Fresh. Like they only have certain delivery windows. And I've been trying for a couple of days now, mainly out of curiosity. Like I don't necessarily need to order this stuff. But when I went to the supermarket the other day, they didn't have a few things that I wanted. Um, Again, not a big deal. We're totally fine. But I wanted to see. um, And for three days, I haven't been able to get a delivery time. Yeah. Apparently, like if you log on at midnight, that's when they open their delivery slots and you can get one then, but we're not awake at midnight. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> so I don't have a delivery time slot. So I'm just curious, like what I don't know which is better. Cause I know that a lot of people are saying you shouldn't fly a risk because that puts an unfair burden on all the people who are delivering it. But I don't know. But well, what are you supposed to do? What people are doing. What are you what are you supposed to do? Do. I mean, if you have to, yeah, you gotta- it's also creating jobs with yeah. have, uh, I think more people have become delivery people. So it's, you know, tomato, tomato. I don't know. It's yeah, hard to like with leeway. He's a, he was a fishmonger. He only sold fish and he can't keep his business open, only selling fish. So he just was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to offer eggs and milk and cheese and, and deliver it. And then when this is all over, I'll go back to selling fish. And that way he was able to keep his employees. And um, I mean, hey, you got to, I don't know. It's it's a weird time. It's weird. Are you doing delivery service, Kirsten? Uh, (laughs) Richard got a BevMo delivery. Nice. Nice. (laughs) Oh, priorities, priorities. Yeah. Have you guys ordered Um, pizza or anything like that? We have done zero takeout. Did one takeout. We did what did you get? Only pizza. Same we here. were so like, we had done a lot of bathroom remodel and we were just like, I don't, I can't deal with dinner. So we ordered pizza, but that was, that's the only delivery we've had. No, you know what we did when we ordered pizza is we brought the box in the house. I had on rubber gloves. I took the box. We, we have a, a table on our front porch. We left the tip on the table and told yeah. him to leave the pizza on the table. So we, I put rubber gloves on and I got the pizza and then opened the box and Bert had like a cookie sheet and I slid the pizza out of the box and onto the cookie sheet and then walked the box straight to the garbage and washed my hands. So then I thought it lives on cardboard. Let's just get rid of the cardboard. That's so smart. Somebody probably touched the wax paper on the inside too, but I'm, I'm hoping since they're a food service worker, they had gloves on, but the delivery guy that dropped the dominoes did not. So I got rid of the piece that I thought might be contaminated. And then, and then they ate the pizza while I ate green, dark green leafy (laughs) I am getting really tired of my diet. I think being cooped up, I keep going, two Oreos is not bad, right? Just two, two Oreos. I can do two. Maybe like four Ritz crackers with a salad. That'd be okay, right? Mm, I can't. I'm trying not to slip. I'm having a cheat day, one cheat meal a week where I just eat whatever in one meal and don't worry about it. It's usually been pizza day, but, um, but it's getting harder. I think because I just have nothing else to do, but be in this house. I was so busy before I could keep my mind off of wanting to eat bad things. But I think now I feel like I'm so focused on food. Yeah. Like everything, like that's the routine in the house, breakfast, lunch, dinner, where it wasn't such the focus before. Yeah, that's true. Like, also. like all we're doing is talking and thinking about food. You're so, right. And how do we get it? It's harder 
to stay on a diet. Yeah. What, what are we out of? How do we get more of that? Yeah. You know, and eating fresh every day. How many dishes does it take to eat a salad? (laughs) Right. 15. I can say 15. 15. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're having for dinner tonight. Probably a blue apron. Um, because then I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks guys for chatting. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it's nice to see you guys. Thank kind of. you. Yeah, it's great to see you guys. Nice. Miss you. I miss you guys too. Oh, look, Halston's back just in time. Are you green screened or something? What's behind? You are? Oh, shut up. <laughs> you. That's the- At Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, I'm going to do this again with some other friends over the course of the virus because I am officially um, down to no podcast in the bank. So this is the quarantine series of Wife of the Party. So I may be calling you back. You're going to have lots of time to bank. Like you can bank a hundred of them and then just take the next year too well, off. <laughs> I like them in person. I miss being in the room. Yeah. Um, but thanks you guys have fun over spring break, whatever you do. Uh, I'm totally stealing that carnival idea. I'm totally stealing that. Yeah. Steal away. I see corn dogs. I see kettle corn. I I wanted to make kettle corn. My kids weren't interested. They're like, no, no funnel cake, funnel cake. I was like, all right. So I made funnel cake. My house was like nothing but fried food. That's a carnival. You didn't fry any bacon. I did not fry any bacon. No, yeah. I thought about frying Oreos, but I was like, oh. they're so good. I've never had one. Oh, they're so good. Have you ever had a deep fried Twinkie? No. Oh my but, God. Like, the problem with carnival food is it's all dessert. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to need something. So I at least, you know. Corn dogs. Chicken tenders. My kids Chicken don't tenders. Have that, so. Yeah, corn dogs. Um, what else is a good carnival food? Fried bacon. It's like um, all, yeah, it's like all garbage, you know, which is fine because spring break, who cares? Spring break. <laughs> yeah, they had soda, like it was root beer floats, like, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It was all terrible. That's awesome. And then with a side of antacids for the adults. <laughs> <laughs> and some Pepsi AC. And yeah. <laughs> well, thanks guys for coming on. Enjoy spring break. Thanks. All right. You have too. a good one. You too. I hope to see you all soon. Yeah. Stay well. You too. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.